we've been brought together through BAS connections by a topic that's much larger than both of us. In our project, we are determining if there is a causal relationship between the growth of Durham's creative industries and the urban economy. As Durham residents, we've seen many changes in recent years, but we wanted a metric to measure these changes. As a BAS Connections group, we split up into six distinct teams, facing different facets of the project, but still maintaining our overall research goal. You may be wondering, where does our research question originate? Our work responds to that of urbanist Richard Florida, whose research ranked Durham as the most creative metropolitan area in 2010, having the highest share of people from the creative class. Now he differentiates the creative class from the service class, the working class, and the agricultural class, based on Bureau of Labor Statistics occupation codes. For Florida, creativity means innovation. We use Florida's book because it's highly influential. For example, it is used by many urban policymakers and is even referenced to in Durham's cultural master plan. Florida's creative class includes occupations varying from healthcare, tech jobs and management functions, all the way to artists and writers. Whereas Florida sees this as a homogenous group and he looks at the US as a whole, we were able to look at each specific occupation at the local level and chart how they have developed over time. According to our findings, we find that an increase in the creative class percentage leads to an overall increase in the average annual income for the entire metropolitan area. This shows that attracting creative class industries positively affects the economic health of a city. Additionally, given our timeline from 2005 to 2016 in reference to the Great Recession, we show that the creative class is more resilient than the other classes in times of economic crisis. According to Florida, the creative class is attracted by what he calls street level culture, a term he associates with the arts but only loosely defines. To examine the relationship between the creative class and the arts, we use Florida's metrics provided by Bureau of Labor Statistics. These state that there are only 40 individuals employed in the fine arts sector in the entire metropolitan area. From my professional experience working in the arts in Durham, I know this to be inaccurate. But how do you measure the size and impact of the arts ecosystem? By building our own data set for Durham, which now contains more than 200 active arts and culture entities, we were able to map the arts ecosystem and analyze its development over time. Our preliminary data indicates that with the growth of the creative class, the arts ecosystem has gradually shifted east from the downtown core. This finding is suggestive of gentrification, an effect that both impacts and implicates the art sector. Further, to determine the value of public policy oriented towards the creative class, we've also measured the effects of creative industries by looking at housing values. By mapping this out in ArcGIS, we have determined that both housing value growth and creative industry growth in Durham are heavily correlated. Additionally, creative class businesses tend to cluster within distinct areas in the city. In the future, by utilizing regression analysis, we intend to determine whether the presence of creative class businesses has a direct impact on housing values. A further stage in this project will map the Durham government's infrastructural initiatives to determine whether these were successful in attracting creative class businesses. While we already see that Florida's creative class theory offers some useful insights into, into urban growth, it fails to capture what human capital, in other words, education, adds to the table. This is especially pertinent when thinking about Durham, with the presence of Duke University and in close proximity to other universities. To address this, we collected educational attainment data for the Durham metro area from the American Community Survey and analyze the correlation between the level of education and the economic well-being of the city. Our regression analysis suggests that a significant correlation exists between GDP per capita and doctorate degrees in US metro areas. Finally, Florida names tolerance as another important factor that attracts the creative class. He measures this by looking at what he calls the integration index, defined as the share of foreign-born residents and the presence of the LGBTQ community. We found his metrics for tolerance to be insufficient 
and are thus looking for other ways to more precisely measure tolerance. For instance, we've begun looking at businesses in Durham that prominently display equal employment or diversity statements. We will continue this research into next year, further developing new metrics for the economic impacts of the arts and tolerance on urban growth, and expanding our research into the effectiveness of projects set forth by Durham's cultural master plan. Additionally, we hope that our work becomes a useful tool that we can pass off to Durham and the surrounding area. We would like to thank our fellow team members, teaching assistants and professor, as well as the Bass family for, their, for this opportunity and for their generous funding and support.